Hey, how's this? Two market researchers get the taste for beer, craft beer. So what do they do? They escape the cubicle and start a business from a self-storage facility. Soon enough, they've opened up a bottle shop in an industrial estate selling 1,100 types of their favourite beers. Cheers, Big Ears. Yeah, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show. A successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Timbo Reed, but you... So much more importantly, are a motivated business owner ready to crank out some great marketing. And that's exactly what we do around here. Welcome to the newbies. Welcome to those who've been around for a while and have chosen to come back for some more marketing madness. I love yous both. Well, hopefully there's more than two of you, but you know what I mean. Hey, big show today, fireside chat. Well, really a barside chat with a fellow by the name of Richard Kelsey. He's the founder of Beer Cartel. It's an online and an offline beer store. Selling a lot of beer, hey? As you gathered at the top of the show there. Um, I have got a new way for you to send me marketing questions that you need answered. A new way to uncover the blockages that are stopping you from moving forward. More on that in a moment. And I have got a motivational quote from another US president. (laughs) It's actually a motivational marketing quote from another US president. Weird, huh? Stick with me. Hey, today's show, lovingly brought to you by the very good folk at Net Registry who get your online marketing sorted. You can check out exclusive listener packages they've got just for you with some handy little discounts along the way over at netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo. One is a $79 a month do it for me website package. Everything done for you. Gotta love that. And 99 Designs make this show possible too, team. So any design you need, anything, car wrap, or brochure, book cover, uh, business card, logo, you name it, they'll do it. And it's all done via a competition system. You'll get designers from all around the world uh, competing to give you a design you love. Guaranteed, by the way, within seven days. And head over to 99designs.com forward slash Timbo for a free $99 upgrade. Now, as per usual, there is marketing, G-O-L-D, dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Do you need a speaker for your next conference? Recommend Timbo to your event organiser. Or better still, book him. Tim Reid. That's R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U. Hey, now, as I said, I've got a new way for you to send me marketing questions. So have you got some aspect of your marketing that's kind of freaking you out? That's a blockage? Maybe it's a question around your website. Maybe it's around email marketing. Might even be a question about podcasting, hey? (laughs) Love podcasting. But no matter what your question, here's what I want you to do. Head over to iTunes and write it down in the listener review section. Along the way, feel free to review the show. Love five stars. And leave your marketing question. Also, leave your Twitter handle or your website address so I can give you a bit of exposure in return for going to that trouble. And maybe, just maybe, I will answer that marketing question on the show and or get a marketing expert to answer it on the show. So head over to iTunes, go to the listener review section for this podcast, the Small Business Big Marketing Show, and leave your marketing question. If you want it answered quicker, feel free to join the forum over at crankmymarketing.com where there are loads of business owners where we help each other crank through some um, some marketing blockages, share our successes, and I'm joined by my offside of Lukey over there, and we're in there every day answering questions. So there you go. You've got two options, iTunes or the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. Righto, team, let's get stuck into today's guest. It is Richard Kelsey from a business called Beer Cartel. You can find them over at beercartel.com.au. Now, Richard seemed like an interesting business story. I came across it in my business magazine. It's called My Business Magazine, which you'll find in, well, I found it in the Qantas Club. It seemed like an interesting story. A couple of corporate lads making the escape into small business by selling 1,100 types of craft beer online and offline. That's interesting, hey? 
But this interview is not dripping with marketing gold. Well, not as much as I was hoping it would, right? So in in retrospect, I sort of chose to interview Richard based on the fact that he was selling 1,100 types of beer, and I do love craft beer. So I was in awe. However, in terms of actual marketing insights during our chat, I think they come from what he's not doing versus what he is doing. And I highlight some of those things along the way with him. Uh, I'm not sure whether he appreciated it or not, but I always think it's good to see what, you know, look at what's possible, not necessarily what is. Um, there's one glaring marketing hole in particular uh, in terms of what he's not doing, and I call him on it during the interview. Uh, now, Skype lets us down, team, at about the 23-minute mark, just for a few seconds, so uh, it sorts itself out pretty quickly. So without further ado, here's Richard Kelsey from Beer Cartel. Richard Kelsey co-founder of Beer Cartel. Welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Thank you. Hey, Richard, I've got a headline for you. What's that? Free beer. Sounds good to me. You done it? Uh, we have, actually. <laughs> How'd that work for you? Yeah, it was good. We, uh, what was it? We had a new beer that got um, launched on the market and we uh, basically sent out an email to, to our online customers um, and said to them, yeah, that there was this free beer that was available for them to buy. <laughs> right. Um, or yeah, get. Get. Um, and, yeah, worked well because um, invariably, I mean, they, they still had to pay for postage. So, Oh, there was, an asterisk the, next, there was an asterisk next to it. Well, <laughs> well our, our standard thing is that you do pay for postage. Yeah, so fair they, enough. they got the, the free beer and then they thought, okay, well, why not get a few more while I'm there? So Great. Yeah. So it worked pretty well. Uh, yeah, it did. It did. We've, we've done it. I, th- I think it's a headline any business can use, whether you're, whether you're in plumbing or, you know, uh, chiropractic. I think it's just a good headline. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> hey, um, now I understand you are a cubicle escapee. What were you doing before Beer Cartel? Uh, so I was working in market research. Oh, jeez. So I worked there for, uh, I think it was seven or eight years across a couple of different companies. Um, it's quite a, actually quite good just because it starts to give you a bit of a understanding of of how consumers think mm-hmm. um, and it sort of uh, with our, our business we always try and think of, of, of how a customer is going to sort of interpret things that we do mm-hmm. um, and so we always keep them at, at the front so so how do you do that because market research would give you some really good disciplines actually for for running a business so how do you Interpret what a customer is going to think. Um, I guess it's it's um, sort of the adage of, of walking in the customer's shoes. Mm. So if, if I was the, the customer, whether it be in our store or online, how am I actually going to, to think and how am I going to interpret something that I see, an offer, or what, what's going to be appealing to me? Um, what are the sort of, I guess, key messages that, that, that make me want to, I guess, go out and buy whatever the product is? Can I just say how few businesses do that, how refreshing it is to hear that you do that? Only last night I was watching um, a YouTube video uh, of Steve Jobs, an interview with Steve Jobs, and he was he talked about the product development process started with the customer experience and worked its way back, you know, and it sounds like you, you do exactly the same thing. Yeah, we do. We do. So we've just uh, launched a new website um, two months ago and th- that was very much – so we had our developers and they said, okay, this is what it's going to look like. Um, and, yeah, throughout the whole process we were always going back to them and saying, hold up, we've got mm-hmm. to have a think about how you're actually going to do this because does that actually work with how consumers think? Is that- so what's the conversation sa- – what's your partner's name, your business partner? Uh, it's Jeff. Jeff. So the conversation between you and Jeff – when you are talking about the customer experience and working your way back, what's that sound like, look like? Um, it's, I guess it's a bit of to and fro. Mm. Um, so we're, we're both from a market research background. Crazy guys. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we, we do know, we know sort of uh, numbers behind things. And we've also had a lot of like focus groups that we've done and, and depth interviews with, with customers and everything. But it's um yeah, we we know what sort of people typically say. Okay, well, I don't like that, or yep. or um, 
that that's just crazy or how much do you listen to that because there's a great quote which i've shared on this show previously by henry ford which is something it goes to something like if i'd asked what people wanted they would have said faster horses yeah so how much do you do you listen to everything people say and just do it or where's the filter uh no i think you have to i mean the You've got to sort of take on board what they say, um, but there's also, I guess, a, a limit to, to what you can do as far as what, what's sort of viable within the business. Mm. Um, and then there's also certain people that are always going to be, um, I guess, find little issues yeah, here and there. So it, it's trying to appeal to the, the 99% that, that absolutely love the service. Um, and, and yeah, having a filter where, where you can for for stuff that isn't necessarily as as kind of realistic. If you yeah, like. Richard, you and Jeff are sitting there doing your market research, compiling the questionnaires. Where'd the idea for beer cartel come from? Both of us, um, so myself, I uh, the very first job I had out of university was actually doing a market research project for a um, microbrewery in, in New Zealand. Um, and I actually got paid in beer, <laughs> as you do. As you do. <laughs> and the beer was very, very good. Um, it was a brewery at the time called Limburg, um, which unfortunately is closed right. down now. But the, the brewer now works for another New Zealand brewery called Emerson's, which is also fantastic. Mm-hmm. So you got the taste for it. You got the taste. You're going oh, we need a beer business, Jeff. Oh, exactly. No, so um, there was that, and then Jeff um, had gone – on his overseas uh, trip, and um, he has um, Belgium heritage um, within him, and he went to, I think, to Belgium and was catching up with family over there and um, drinking some of the the great Belgian beers Mm -hmm. that are around. And um, I think it was, yeah, so he came back to Australia, and one day I was sort of talking to him and and saying, what's the the male equivalent of, of a... Um, Tupperware party um, <laughs> and at that time there was craft beer was very very new to Australia how long ago are we talking uh, uh, that was 2009 oh mate you're well ahead of your time you, you that, that's the market researcher and you're coming out well it was almost too early but um no it, it worked well um, and so we started with a uh, monthly beer club that we offered online yeah right. um, so worked out of a, a tiny little Kennard storage shed that was about two metres by one metre, um, and th- this was L- just... Literally one of those self-storage sheds? No windows, just a roller door? Uh, yeah, it didn't Ooh. even have a roller door, just had a little door on it. This was in their um, nah. wine area. So Love they, they've got a small little cool wine area in their, their um, setup, and so we would go there and... <laughs> Um, each month, we'd basically take over the whole wine area, and we'd have our, all the cases of beer laid out. Love it. Was was that allowed? Um, no. Yeah, I mean, they, they they weren't against it. They kind of knew if they went down there that they'd see what we're up to. Um, and we did have um, so the beers were obviously coming in directly to Kennards, and and they yeah, received. Yeah. There, so. well, you're in good company, um, Richard, because I, I can tell you Guns N' Roses also started in a self-storage shed yeah, right. in LA. So, you know, there's you, you, there's a connection there. Uh, mate, so you are running – did you guys leave your corporate job on the back of what, some initial success with the online beer club or you just – you'd had it anyway? Uh, no, so I, I basically stayed in my job yeah. uh, for, what was it, another two years from there. Um, Jeff, yeah, he, he gave up his full-time role and, um, sort of went all guns at it. Mm-hmm. And then... Was there a moment when you've got the wobbles? So hang on, hang on. I, I think when you're sort of growing at the start, you're always having sort of wobbles along the way. Well, they're good wobbles. <laughs> they're good. It's like paying tax. You know, you're making money if you're paying tax. So, but so from, from day one, you kind of felt like you'd hit, you'd hit a nerve. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was still still very small, um, and so I think it was about uh, probably a year and a half later, we, we basically said, okay, if we're going to keep keep going, keep growing, we we needed to actually have a bricks and mortar um, place. So we then 
started looking and we purchased a, uh, it was a warehouse and a small store um, based in Artarman in Sydney. So did you go, uh, you had a beer club, um, did, before opening up the retail outlet, did you start um, selling a multitude of beers online? Uh, we did. Um, but it, yeah, so there was a kind of stepping stone to getting the retail outlet. Yeah, it was at the time, so um, we, we only really sold cases online um, and uh, we didn't necessarily stock all the beers, so we, we'd do a bit of drop shipping. Um, but it was all it was all such an um, I guess early stage environment for for craft beer mm-hmm. that it, it did make it quite tricky. So I think when we we first opened the store, we had about fifty craft beers um, that we were actually selling in store. Um, so this was just taking over an existing bottle shop, um, and now we've got. Over eleven hundred. Wow! I want to talk to you about that eleven hundred because that's no, that's a that's a large number of beers. But uh, so you took over an existing bottle shop because what I understand is your retail outlet is in an industrial estate, correct? It is. It is. We so that's it, making things pretty tough. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of foot traffic. Yeah, we call it uh, our secret hideaway bottle shop. Um, <laughs> so it, it's very much a word of mouth bottle shop. Um, What's the reward? I've interviewed a previous guest on the show, um, Sam Heck from Common Folk Coffee. Now, Sam is a, is a it's a, a very cool coffee shop built in a tile factory in an industrial estate in Mornington, Victoria. Right? right. Um, he couldn't afford a high street rental which I'm sure you probably couldn't at the time. So he's gone, okay, what's the next best option? Be an industrial estate, no foot traffic. But when you get to Common Folk Coffee, it's a real reward. Like getting there, it's a great experience. You know, it's just a, it's a cool place to be. Yeah. Is your bottle shop a reward? Uh, I'd say so. I mean, we... In what way? We often get a lot of people that come in here and they just say they're like a kid in a candy store. Is that because there's 1,100 beers there or because you do cool things there? Uh, a bit of both. Right. So... Um, yeah, eyes light up as soon as you see there's so many different beers and just yeah, yeah, yeah. cool labels, um, cool stories behind the beers. Where, where are the stories? On the labels? But yeah, on the labels, um, but it can also be just um, what our staff actually tell the customer as well. Okay. Let me guess. I haven't been there, Richard, but is there a whole lot of hipsters on staff? <laughs> hey? Not, not massively. Young We've bearded got... men with tattoos? We do have a few beards. Um, but no tattoos. <laughs> no tattoos. I don't, I don't think we have a single tattoo. No. Oh, geez, that, is that a no tattoo policy, or just it's just the way <laughs> that it's fallen? Uh, I think it's just the way it's fallen <laughs> at the moment. So, so, so tell me, uh, eleven hundred beers. Uh, there's there's a wonderful marketing case study, which I'm sure you'll be across. It was a jam manufacturer who took the end aisle of a supermarket with 24 different flavours of jam, thinking this is going to go unbelievably well, and he yep. didn't sell any. Uh, yep. And it got down to the point where the optimal amount of jams, flavours, was three because yep. we don't like choice. Yes, so the, the paradox of choice is then they talk about it. It is something that we always sort of keep in mind and uh, we do try and and kind of limit the amount of suggestions that you give people um, and we are always thinking about ways that we can sort of limit that choice because, yeah, we're, when you get into a store and you see 1,100 beers, it can oh, be pretty overwhelming. P- personally, uh, uh, I would find it really difficult. I, I love craft beer. I'm a pale ale fan. I yep. would find, uh, I, you know, there are so many different types of pales and I would probably fall back to just walking out with a box of little creatures, which would kind of annoy me knowing that I've left probably some really good beers behind. Yeah. At times we do actually sort of just do pick and choose for customers and they say, okay, I've got no idea. Are you able to choose some for me? Mm-hmm. Um, this is what I like. These are the flavours I like. I've had this beer before that was quite good. Um, yeah, if you can pick some out for me. Um, and so that, that's something that we do often. I love your guarantee, mate. One of your parts of your guarantee. If the items you are returning are beers, please return all bottles, including empties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if all else fails, you don't like it, drink it and return it for your money back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Many people do that? Uh, no, I don't think, I don't know if we've had any. Right, okay, let's not encourage that, uh, uh, Richard. <laughs> hey, uh, so 1,100 beers, I imagine beer's perishable. What's the, how do you, ma- how do you manage that amount of stock? Uh, yeah, so um, beers typically have a uh, shelf life of, say, mm-hmm. 6 to 12 months. Mm-hmm. 
Um, we've got one beer at the moment that was from the US um, from a brewery called Stone, and it's uh, called Enjoy by 31st of October 2015. That's what it's uh, called. That's what it's called. Love um, it. And the idea behind it is that you've actually got it. You're meant to buy it and drink it within 30 days. So it was only brewed um, at the very start of the month, got air freighted in from the States, um, and then the idea is that you want to drink this beer absolutely as fresh as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, uh, most beers are 6 to 12 months, um, and and we do try to keep track of, of – the dates on all the beers so that, that uh, we do sort of rotate through them as much as possible. Um, occasionally you will have one that sort of goes beyond that, um, which doesn't mean it, it's in bad drinking condition. Mm-hmm. Some beers actually get better with age. So yeah, a bit like so myself. Some, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's talk about the online store. Um, yep. What's the fulfilment process look like? Because, I mean, beer's heavy. Uh, and you know, I imagine you're only selling boxes of it. Yep. So what's the pr- fulfilment process look like and how do you keep costs down around shipping? Uh, so we use Australia Post as our, our postal partner. Um, beer is definitely heavy um, and shipping costs are, can be quite expensive. Mm. Um, so we, we do um, ship things to Northern Territory, which is – what, four and a half thousand kilometres mm-hmm. away from where we are. So, um, and those deliveries are very expensive. Is it, is it a flat rate or how, how do you calculate that? Because I imagine that would be quite a blockage to people buying online. It would be for me. Yeah, so we, we have a flat rate um, within uh, New South Wales and, and Canberra, which is um, $10 a case. Nice. And for anywhere else in Australia, is $15 a case. And does that mean sometimes you, you take a loss on that? Uh, yeah, so we try to do it. So there's a few sort of swings and roundabouts. Yep. So you make some on on some, and then uh, yeah, take a hit on others. Um, and occasionally we do have the, uh, a free shipping offer. So when we launched the new website, we we offered customers free shipping for I think it was ten day, days if they put in an order. Yeah, nice. What's the uh, what's the split between online sales and in fact wrap some numbers around where you're at. First of all, what's the split between online and offline sales? Uh, it's about fifty fifty. Really? Yeah. Would you? Where would you like it to be? Uh, the online component will probably be the one that that grows most over the, the next uh, twelve months. Would you like to get to the point of closing the shop? Uh, no, I, I mean, I, I think having a storefront is a, it gives people an idea of what we look like, um, how we, how the beers look like. Um, hmm. I would have thought you could do that without a storefront. I mean, I've had um, a couple of weeks ago I had uh, Nathan Hupster from costumes.com.au. So yep. big big online costume business. Um, they they do everything you do. They take a front – they take a photo out the front of their warehouse. They show the costumes, you know, all that type of stuff and they don't have the cost of, of rent. Yeah, I mean, we'd still be having a warehouse anyway, so it's – Yeah, right. The, the stores just a little wee sort of add on, if you like. Yeah, um, gotcha. But we do get a lot of, of customers that that do buy online. They also come in store. So we have um, people that come up from South Australia mm-hmm. to stop by um, when they're in the area, and then they also buy online as well. Hey guys, I'm speaking with Richard Kelsey, the founder of Beer Cartel, possibly Australia's biggest craft beer store. Before I challenge Richard on the business's personality. Here's a word from two businesses that can lighten your marketing load. Support for this show comes from 99designs, where dozens of designers compete to deliver a fast, affordable design you'll love. Speaking of love, their big cheese, Patrick Llewellyn, recently compared 99designs to a dating site. We really think of contests almost like the dating paradigm. You go to a nightclub, it's noisy, there's a lot of people to meet, you get to meet a lot of people, and if you're lucky, you know, at the end of that process, you might meet someone, right? And then you go on and and, and have dates. And so a contest is kind of like that paradigm. You put up your proposal, lots of designers submit their ideas, and then you start to whittle down to a few of the ones that really resonate with you. Mm. And then ultimately, you pick one of them. And once you've picked that one designer, the chances of you going on to work with that designer to get other things designed is actually very high. 99designs, where love is in the air. 
For a free $99 upgrade on your first design, visit 99designs.com forward slash Timbo. Get on Timbo's mailing list over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Support for this show comes from Net Registry. Recently, I was Skyping it up with Verity Ma, their Chief Marketing Officer, when the line deteriorated. She thought it may be because she had loads of browsers open, at which point I'm like, why so many browsers? Well, because websites appear differently on different browsers. So if I run multiple, then I can get a sense of how our websites are tracking across different browsers and customers' websites. Net Registry, where attention to detail rules. Visit netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo for a website that works on, well, all browsers. First of all, just want to talk about the personality of the business. You've opted, you've got the new website out and you've opted, it's it's pretty straight to the point. Here, you, you kind of let the beer do the talking. Mm. And as I was looking through it, I was comparing you, rightly or wrongly, you can have a go at me if I was wrong, to the guys at Vino Mofo who have previously been on this show. You're aware of those guys? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the, the language they use around, I mean, look at the name itself, Vino Mofo. Um mm. There's a tweet on the front page which says, um, I just bought wine from Vino Mofo on my mobile while the hairdresser makes my my hair blue. Fuck yeah, the future. (laughs) This is what they say, right? And they've just got this badass attitude around the whole wine thing. And, and, And beer would give you the permission to do that as well, but you've chosen not to go down that that path. Uh, yeah, at the moment, um, I think the business kind of reflects uh, both myself and business partner Jeff's kind of personality. Right. Um, it, it can be, I think, challenging for any business to, to, to try to be something that you're not. Uh, if you So if we were trying to be absolutely outrageous, I think we'd struggle just because we don't actually have that as part of our personalities. Yeah, right, okay. So, so you okay, so describe you and Jeff pretty straight down the line, conservative. Um, let's let let the beer do the talking, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah. I, what do you like when you get a couple of beers in you? <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't say I, I'm the absolute life of the party, <laughs> but I, I'm definitely someone that people enjoy having a chat with. Yeah, right. Uh, having yarn, talking about stories, adventures, travel, everything else. Yeah. What's your view on marketing? Um, I think it's something that you absolutely need in any business. Oxygen. Do you find it hard or easy? Uh, it's something that uh, I've got a sort of personal interest in it, so it's something that I'm always trying to uh, look at doing new things, having fun with, uh, trying different things out. Um, and, yeah, just seeing, I mean, that the world's always changing and it's just a matter of trying to keep up with those trends. What, how do you approach the marketing? Is it something you do when you get time? Do you put aside a day a week? Do you have an agency? What, how do you do it? It's pretty much all in-house. Uh, we, it, it is one of those things that you, you try and find time for and you don't necessarily always have that much time to actually allocate to it. Mm. Isn't that interesting? You've gone, you know, in one sense, you've five minutes ago, you've gone it's sort of mission critical to the success of a yeah. business, yet... You, like so many other business owners, uh, struggle to find the time to do it. It's it's just, it's it, it fasc- that fascinates me. I think it's why I do this show. Yeah, I think it's also part and parcel of, of being a small business. Is that as a small business, you've got to wear so many different hats, and it's only when you get to a certain stage that you can actually go, okay, right, we're going to have a dedicated person marketing, and that that's when. Um, you can, I think, you've probably be able to get some really substantial marketing gains. I wonder if you are, you, are you, well, I go back a step. Are you happy with the growth of Beer Cartel right now? Uh, at the moment, yes. Yeah, okay, okay. I wonder if you'd really uh, put aside some allocated time on marketing once a week, once a day. Who knows, you know, wh- what difference it would make. Yeah, I mean, uh, as, as we continue to grow, we're, we're always trying to work on trying to systemise things and make it so that we can then uh, give more, I guess, uh, projects, um, things down to, to staff sort of below us and mm-hmm. then that gives us more time for actually working on the the more critical elements, so like the, the marketing 
um, and future of the business. What's the most effective marketing you do? Probably our, um, our emails to our database. Really? To be honest. Yeah, so we have about 6,000 people that are customers in our database. So, Richard, what do you think the secret source is to your email marketing? Is it the frequency, the headline, the copy you use, the images? What's working? I think it's a bit of, bit of everything, um, just like uh, any part of our sort of marketing. It's, it's work in progress, um, but it, it, it's about sort of trying as many different things as possible. Um, I think A-B testing of emails is, is pretty essential. Definitely telling stories about the products uh, yeah. um, and providing those images that, that does help a lot. Yeah, stories is, stories is everything. You wouldn't be able to do AdWords, would you, Google AdWords, because of the alcohol restrictions? Uh, no, we can. How do you get around that? Uh, it's, you just have to choose that you're an adult product um, and then you can actually advertise it. An adult product for adult searches. And I notice you, you've got a blog going, but you kind of you, you haven't yet fully embraced, well, I call it helpful marketing. Others would call it content marketing. But, mate, you know, like, again, it's beer. So, you you know, YouTube channel, podcast, you could have some amazing booklets and you could, do, you could create so much interesting content. Is that sort of on the horizon for you guys? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So there's, yeah, a lot of things to do um, with new websites. So we actually do have... A lot of blog content that just hasn't quite been migrated from the old website yet. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, uh, come 2016, we'll be seeing a lot of sort of content marketing from us. Anything in particular? Hoping to do a fair bit around YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, We, Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that do sort of reviews on beer, um, but I I find them a bit kind of, I guess, stale, Mm -hmm. a little boring. So, yeah, we're hoping to... uh, to, to create something in that space that, that has a bit of flavour that, that um, is actually quite interesting to watch. Yeah, right. Good, mate. Well, interesting story. Uh, I look forward to uh, seeing how it progresses and um, maybe if we talk in a couple of years' time that online sales balance will be well and truly uh, the majority of the business, eh? I think so. Good on you. Thanks for sharing a beer cartel story, Richard. No problem. There you go, team. That was Richard Kelsey. He is the owner, the founder of beercartel.com.au, and you can hit him up on Twitter. Tell him you heard him on the show, at Beer Cartel. That's his Twitter handle. I always get jealous of businesses that have a Twitter handle that matches their website address, that matches their Facebook, all that kind of stuff. Not easy to do these days. Hey, I want to share my top three learnings from my fireside chat with Richard. Thanks to the very good guys at 99designs.com forward slash Timbo, where you will get a free $99 upgrade to one of your listings. Go and get something designed. Dare you. And also netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo, where they've got some wonderful online packages to get your business sorted online. Learning number one, walk in your customer's shoes. Uh, classic market researcher saying that, and so important, so important. Don't just pay lip service to that, but literally think about what would your customers like to see, like to hear, like to do when confronted with your business. Walk in their shoes, often. Learning number two, stop waiting for all the ducks to be lined up in a row. They never will be. I've said this before. Richard didn't. He just went and started a business in a self-storage facility. I love that. He didn't wait for a fancy office or warehouse or retail shop. That came later. Stop waiting for the ducks to be lined up. Just get started in whatever marketing or business conundrum you have. Learning number three. Was I too harsh on him on this one? My learning number three is identifying your business's personality and living it throughout all touch points. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be wacky, crazy, funny, but I just think get clear, have some engaging personality in your business. Ask yourself, what are those four personality traits that you'd love prospects to use when describing your business? And then share them with all your marketing contributors, your designers, your writers, your developers, whoever's contributing to your marketing, and make sure that personality comes through consistent, consistently, because that, my team is how you build a brand. 
What do you think Richard should do more of? Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com, look for episode 278, and let me know. Harry S. Truman once said, It's amazing what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. Oh, I do love that quote. Uh, an old boss of mine, Peter Cleminger, once said to me, he said, Tim, you are here to make the clients famous. You don't own the ideas. You just make sure that the client feels as though they do, that they're famous, that they're the ones getting all the accolades. And that, that was a bit of a game changer for me. Um, it redirected the energy from me, the young account director in the advertising agency, to the client who was paying the bills after all. Hey, plenty of marketing gold coming your way. Be sure to use Net Registry if you need a website or you need to get your website found. They've got that $79 a month do it for me website package, which is an absolute ripper over at netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo. Hey, if you need anything designed, anything, then grab your free $99 design upgrade over at 99designs.com forward slash Timbo. And it's fully guaranteed. No downside team. Love a guarantee, just like uh, Richard at Beer Cartel does. Hey, this show sounds amazing. Thanks to the Sonic Hedgehog himself, Daryl Misson. And the music bed is written and produced by rock god Mr. Lockie Dolly. If you need a speaker for an upcoming event, I'm all yours. Check out timreed.com.au. And if you want to surround yourself with motivated business owners, then head over to crankmymarketing.com and join the Small Business Big Marketing Forum and get all your marketing conundrums solved on an ongoing basis by me and the rest of the members. Um, until next week. I'm Timbo Reed. Always have been, always will be. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.